continue delivering on our bid book promises. Accordingly, as you saw in 2014, there was significant investment in terms of developing and creating the uh, fan zones that we had, two fan zones, uh, utilizing the cooling technologies. The stadiums themselves are going ahead in terms of the cooling technology, our commitment to the research and development of the cooling technology is ongoing. Aside from the other promises that uh, we provided within the bid book, and we're actually continuing to deliver. So for us, in terms of action on the ground and progress on the ground, we've been continuing from, we've been start, we started from day one, and this is just part of the process. And we're, and we're continuing you know, as, as business as usual. Well, it's not a question of a PR strategy. It's a question, again, of utilizing. We've always believed this World Cup is a platform uh, that, ha that has positive impacts on many different fronts. One of them, of course, is uh, allowing for people to understand the Middle East and you know, creating that, the bridge between East and West. And accordingly, there's a lot of initiatives that we're undertaking. Within the, within the, the end of this year, you'll see a number of initiatives and ongoing as well. You'll see, you'll see them coming out. Part of it is also, for example, hosting friendly matches, hosting some tournaments. Uh, and aside from that as well, there's, there's a lot of collaboration working with different stakeholders from, from around the football community in the world uh, towards promoting uh, the spirit of, of, of the first World Cup in the Middle East. No, we're continuing with, with our plans, as, as I said from the very beginning, you know, our, our, uh, especially because a lot of people assume the cooling technology was on hold until this decision gets made, but that's not the case. Within our stadium designs, cooling technology has been t utilized within our training sites, within our, uh, all, all our plans, as I said, in particular for legacy purposes as well. The investments are continuing, the research and development is ongoing, and the deliveries is, is ongoing on the ground. So, no, it hasn't changed anything. What do you, the Supreme Legacy Development Committee, what, what can you do to try and improve the conditions for the workers who are building the World Cup stadiums? Well, I mean, as we've always said, in terms of the commitment towards workers' welfare and, and, and the progress on the ground, uh, we're committed to it from the very beginning. The health and safety and dignity of every person working on a World Cup project is of the paramount importance for us. Uh, the standards that we've issued, that we've imposed within our tender process, uh, with any contractor that comes on board, which covers areas of uh, recruitment, uh, covers areas of uh, workers' accommodation, health and safety and repatriation again, uh, are in place right now. We're, of course, developing them. We're in discussions with NGOs, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the International Labour Organization, towards looking at uh, you know ways of improving, of course, these standards and making them more practical and pragmatic in terms of development uh, or uh, uh, implementation on the ground. And we're learning uh, about this, you know, as we implement uh, about any potential gaps on a day-by-day -day basis. So progress is being made on the ground, along with other stakeholders as well. Uh, Qatar Foundation, Qatar Rail and so on, a lot of other stakeholders are uh, also working on implementing their standards on the ground as well. Um, so progress is being made. It's, it's a gradual progress, uh, but I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, many international NGOs have recognized the steps that are being taken, in particular with the Supreme Committee. And, um, you know, uh, this is a matter that, will be, that progress will be made on a day-by-day -day basis.